Good evening. This is the uh, regular meeting of the Ojai Planning Commission, um, October 16th, 2013, at the Council Chambers, City Hall, um, Ojai, California. Members of the public wishing to address the Planning Commission on items appearing on the agenda are requested to complete a speaker's card and file it with the Secretary prior to the start of the meeting. Cards are available in the lobby. Speakers should state their name and address for the record and limit your comments to three minutes or less. Comments must be directed to the Commission and not to the audience. While Planning Commission is in session, all in attendance are expected to maintain order and decorum and obey orders of the Chair. Roll call, please. Nolan, Merck, Osborne, Crabtree, Here. Foster, Here. Becker, Here. Nicklin. Yeah. Uh, Commissioner Foster, do you the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Um, public communications item is for members of the public to address the Planning Commission on items of city business other than scheduled agenda items. Matters raised at this time may be briefly discussed by the Commission and will generally be referred to staff and or placed on a subsequent agenda. Under state law, other than emerg for emergency items, no action or non-agendized items can be taken at this meeting. Open. There's none. Uh, the consent item, the consent calendar is approved by roll call f on one motion. Should any member of the commission wish to discuss or dis disapprove an item, it must be removed from the consent calendar and considered as a separate item. So we go ahead and approve the meeting, the uh, meetings of the last, the minutes of the last meeting. Yeah, I'll make a motion to accept those moments, minutes rather. A second. Crabtree? Abstain. Foster? Yes. Ecker? Yes. Nicklin? Abstain. Our MAC meeting representative, I don't see her here this evening. Um, the next meeting is October 21st, and we actually don't have a name here to represent. Oh, Osborne. Okay. So it's Commissioner Osborne at the next. Uh, MAC meeting. We'll move on to disclosure of site visits and ex parte contacts. I've been to the um, Ohio Valley School and met with uh, Katrina and the um, maintenance, the, the grounds person. I was with Paula on that meeting. I met separately with Katrina. I attended the same meeting with Paul and Stephen. So we'll move on to public hearing item. It's number two, the text amendment to the Ojai Municipal Code amending section 10-2404 and section 10-2303 3 of the city's zoning ordinance regarding residential building heights. That, sorry, that's the wrong, that's the minute, sorry. Um, so it's item number two, it's the public hearing and determine the project to be categorically exempt to the California Environmental Quality Act, adopting PC resolution 13-13 and design review oh. permit 13-30 and tree permit 13-18. The property owner applicant is Ojai Valley School. Representative is Katrina Rice-Smith. And we open up to staff, please. Thank you, Chair and members of the Planning Commission. Um, tonight, the item before you is a request by Ojai Valley School for a design, re design review permit, DRP 1313, and a tree permit 13-18.
Ojai Valley School is located on El Paseo Drive, 723 El Paseo, I'm sorry, El Paseo Road. Um, it, it is bordered on the uh, south by Ojai Avenue, and it's just west of Matilaha. The focus of tonight's meeting is the Founders Workshop Building, which is located in the northeast corner of the project site. And in addition to the Founders Workshop building, they're also, the applicant is also looking to reconfigure the east parking lot. And you'll see that um, at the top of the screen as well. The zoning for the project site is PL, which is public, quasi-public. Surrounding the project site is residential to the north and east. There's commercial to the south across Ojai Avenue and business park zoning to the west of the project site. Ojai Valley School is located on a 12.6 acre site, which is fully developed with 24 buildings and structures on site. The six original buildings on site, which were constructed between 1923 and 1929, were constructed around the quad area, which is in the center of the school. The Founders Workshop is one of the original buildings, which was designed by Edward Yeoman. The other five buildings, um, which I noted were the six original buildings, the other five buildings were designed by Wallace Neff, architect. The existing Founders Workshop building encompasses 2,367 square feet of building and covered patio. Access to the project site, uh, as I mentioned before, is from El Paseo Road. There's two driveway entrances and two parking lots. The west parking lot, which is where faculty and staff park, and the east parking lot, which is the main entrance to the school and is proposed for reconfiguration. For purposes of CEQA, the California Environmental Quality Act, the applicant has provided the city um, a historic resources report, and that was to assist staff in making the determination of possible environmental impacts relating to historic resources. Staff has reviewed that report and there are no um, impacts related to historic resources. Uh, the report also entailed um, a description of the project and um, the existing project site. It's the first private school in Ojai Valley that was part of the progressive movement. Edward Yeomans was the founder of the school and um, the six original buildings, like I mentioned, surrounding the quad area were constructed between 1923 and 1929. They were all built in English revival style by um, the architect Wallace Neff, um, with the exception of Founders Workshop. That was Yeoman's own design um, because he believed that the workshop was a center of school life. He believed in manual arts and hands-on approach to learning. The existing Founders Workshop is designed in an L-shaped plan. It's a single-story structure with <coughs> low-pitched gable roof with stucco chimney on the north elevation, multi-pane wood awning windows with top hinge, and board and batten siding. Um, I'd like to note, too, that the applicant is in the audience, um, as well as the architect, who are going to give a more detailed description on the architecture, but I'm just giving you a brief overview. Um, the north-south wing, as I mentioned, um, is 732 square feet. That's the original um, wood shop building, um, and I've outlined it below in the site plan. There's also the east-west wing, which was built after the north-south wing, and it's approximately 1,635 square feet. Um, there were later additions made to that building around 1960, and you'll see in some of the photos later in this presentation the additions. The Founders Workshop the applicant is proposing is to um, maintain the north-south wing uh, with the exception of removing the interior ceiling to expose the wood beams above. The east-west wing is proposed to be demolished um, and in its place new construction which will incorporate a new art room, the ceramics classroom, a kiln, new restroom, a new vestibule which will link the old north-south wing with the new addition of the east-west wing. It'll also include a storage building and electrical and mechanical room and outdoor patio for an outdoor classroom. The total, total building square footage of the proposed 
building will be 3,139 square feet, which does include the 732 existing square footage. The eastern parking lot is proposed for reconfiguration. The applicant will be removing the grass area, exporting approximately 750 uh, cubic yards of earth um, it'll encompass removing five parking stalls, but those will be added to the western parking lot um, with restriping. In addition, a new six-foot high masonry wall with columns will be added to the front landscape of the um, school, uh, but staff would like to note that the, the walls are going to be outside of the front yard required area. They're set back about 30 feet from the property line. A new pedestrian walkway will um, be from El Paseo into the school site, providing a nice entrance um, to the school. Along with staff's report, the applicant did um, submit a certified Arbus report, and that's attached to your staff report. This proposes removal of three trees. The tree number one, Coast Live Oak, is a small tree located near Founders Workshop building. Tree number two is Valley Oak. It's located near Frost Hall. And tree number three, the Peruvian Pepper, is located near the western parking lot. This is the Founders Workshop building. Um, staff went and visited the site and took some pictures. This is from the quad area looking east, southeast towards the building. You'll see in the foreground is the north-south wing. And on the left side is the east-west wing, which forms the L shape. The dotted red line shows you, um, kind of delineates where the north-south building is to the right. And then the arrow pointing east is the area of the building that will be demolished. And in its place will be the new addition. Uh, located south of the north-south wing is an area that links the building to, um, I don't think there's actually a, a physical connection, but um, an addition that was built in between the two buildings. Um, the, on the right side, you see the kindergarten building. So that area that's outlined in the red dashed line will be removed. And this is, um, on top you have a view looking east um, towards Founders Workshop building. And in the bottom is the proposed elevation, east elevation, I'm sorry, the west elevation, which shows um, the existing Founders Workshop building and then behind it the new addition. And you'll see the difference in height. The Founders Workshop building is approximately 16 feet in height and the new addition will be approximately 22 feet. But um, just to note that the property does slope, so um, a portion of that new building is about 16 feet in height um, as measured from El Paseo. But if you're standing a little bit more south in the project site, you'll see it's taller. Um, staff did um, publish a notice of this public hearing in the Ojai Valley News, and a notice was sent to all property owners within 300 feet radius of the project site. Um, at this point, no comments have been submitted to staff regarding this project. This project was taken to the Historic Preservation Commission last Thursday, and we've attached um, the minutes from the draft minutes from that meeting to the memo you received tonight. Um, the Historic Preservation Commission reviews uh, projects. Um, if it's a landmark status, they will review and make a recommendation on a project to the Planning Commission. This project, however, is not, uh, this project site, however, is not a landmark status, but staff felt it was appropriate to bring it to the Historic Preservation Commission for their review. Um, and we've attached, um, like I said, we've attached the comments in the minutes provided to you. Um, staff's recommend recommendation tonight is to conduct the public hearing, determine the project to be categorically exempt um, per existing facilities, and adopt um, Planning Commission Resolution number 13, and it actually should be 1317, but I'm sure that Sherry will let you know when you get to that point. So at this point, staff concludes the presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. As I said, the applicant and architect, and I'm sure some of the other team is in the audience and can answer questions as well. 
Thank you. Any questions for staff? None? Any questions for the architect? Uh, Give a presentation, yeah. Would you like to give your presentation? Yeah, I'll start. Hello. Good evening. Uh, my name is Katrina Schmidt. You know me from uh, <laughs> a couple years back. Um, we are uh, very excited and honored to be here to present the uh, Founders Workshop Renovation and Addition Project. Um, a lot of thought, uh, effort, and time and money has been put into this process to date. Um, to come up with a sensitive design that's mindful of marrying the old with the new, while resulting in an educational space uh, that is adequate, comfortable, efficient, and modern. Uh, this is a fantastic effort supported uh, in concept and financially by many current student families, alumni, and friends of the school. Uh, although the project is small as it relates to city matters, uh, this will make a huge positive impact uh, on the art and woodshop programs for the school. And it will also have a positive impact on the aesthetics of the campus, both seen from within and without, uh, because uh, not only because of the upgrades to the building, but to the parking lot, uh, the new uh, proposed defined entries and the landscaping. Uh, we've assembled a great team for this project. Um, Mark Perry Architectural Firm uh, is our architect, and Mark Perry is here, uh, as, as well as uh, Tara Brown, who will both be making the PowerPoint presentation to you. Of course, you know Tom Bostrom. He's the landscape architect, and he is here. Um, also, um, the historian that we use, the San Buenaventura Research Associates, and Judy Trium is here if you want to ask her questions. And the builder is um, Andrew Stasi. He's also a local builder whom you know. Um, today from Ojai Valley School, to answer questions that you may have, uh, Michael Mounsey, he's the president and CEO of the school. Karen Morse is the head of school of Lower Campus and Mac Lajowski, who's the Director of Facilities and Ground. Uh, many of you may not know, we do have two campuses. One is the lower campus, which is pre-kindergarten through eighth grade, and that's located uh, on this project site in the city limits. And we also have an upper campus, which is high school, uh, and that's located in the county uh, off of Reeves Road in, on the east end. Um, we're very excited. Both schools are boarding schools. We're in operation 24-7, so timing is um, of essence for us, and we've worked a long time on this, so we're hoping, um, if all goes well, that we'll um, have this project done, at least the building, uh, August of, of next year, the beginning of school year. Um, that's the plan. So without further ado, I will um, hand it over to the architect. Thank you. Thank you, Katrina. Uh, commissioners, Chair, good evening. My name is Mark Perry. I'm the architect uh, for the project. And um, as an architect, these sort of projects are exciting to me. Um, we see a project where it is a rehabilitation or remodel. Um, we, my firm, we really enjoy that. One that has significance to the client, to the community, even bolsters that. This project is that. As it's already been communicated, the uh, Founders Workshop is a key component to the school, its location, and what the school represents. So as the architect, what we've then were challenged with and what adds excitement to the project is, you know, achieving for OVS, Ojai Valley School, um, the intentions that uh, are there to rehabilitate what is their main one of their main focuses for their education, their hands-on approach. So as a workshop, you know, we're gonna maintain the, the, the main component of it, but it is a rehabilitation of the other, and as Katrina said, the marrying of those two is a, a nice challenge, and we think that we have addressed it appropriately, um, and uh, we were asked to create a building which was welcoming, upgraded, but not overwhelming, fit in with the campus, fit in with the Wallace Neff style, and um, you know we think we have achieved that. 
Uh, so we're here just to present it and we will you know, answer questions. At this point, I'm going to turn it over to my associate, Tara Brown, who is the project manager. She knows the real nitty gritty on the project. Between her and I, we'll be able to answer and uh, address any of your comments and concerns. Tara? Okay. <clears throat> Thanks, Mark. Um, have I got a clicker for the... Right there. Oh, right there. Thank you. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman and Commissioners. Um, I'd just like to present a little bit more detail about this project. I, I see that uh, Heather went through some of the details with you, so bear with me a little bit. Um, this is the proposed site plan, and while we talk about this project as a Founders Workshop, it's really um, the beginning of an overall upgrade for campus, and some of the elements of the project are being looked at as a starting point for the rest of the campus. So for instance, up here, this is where that new wall is going to be going in, the, the plaster wall, and you can see it in elevation there, a little bit small and blurry, but there it is. Uh, and that's, that's going to go outside this entry and the West Campus entry as well. And then also we'll have this pedestrian paving going along the pedestrian areas of campus. And we're starting here, but the, their plan is eventually to make the campus more cohesive with these elements. And also in this plan there are a few um, bollard lights and p parking lot light standards that will be the, sta the same throughout campus eventually. The, uh, the landscaping that, that we were talking about, um, the trees being removed are here, down in this corner, and then at this pedestrian entry. Um, because in order to, well, that was necessary in order to reconfigure so that we get this driveway coming in not on the edge of campus, where it is right now, it kind of sneaks in the corner, um, but we, they wanted to create a, a more welcoming entry into the campus and provide some pedestrian access as well. Just to give you a little background on the project, so um, Heather talked about the original six uh, buildings on campus, and you can see here, these are the six buildings around this quad. And this here is the Founders Workshop, the one we're concerned with today. So these are some images of the buildings. As you can see, most of them looking around the quad are these white stucco buildings, green paint, green roofs. These are the Neff buildings. And this is our building here, the Founders Workshop. So it does sit across the quad from the other buildings. It has a spatial relationship with them, um, but it's definitely its own style. It's a very simple uh, board and batten structure, and the, uh, the defining features are these awning windows and, and this uh, kind of stubby uh, chimney element, which is really, those, aren't, those elements are different than anything else on campus. So the school um, has decided to preserve this, this original building as it is. Um, you can see here, it's gonna need some upgrades. This is the siding, it has a good bit of wood rot. <laughs> this is the interior, the, the, the painted floor is going to need to be redone and this uh, plaster ceiling will be removed to expose the original uh, roof structure above. Let's see. So here, here is our original wing. This is the next addition, which was done sometime before 1929. Um, these are some photos of that first edition. It's been compromised a good bit. The windows have been replaced with these aluminum sliders. Um, it's, it's been paved right up to the door and the interior space has been chopped up a good bit. This is, this is the current wood shop, which is in this really bad L-shaped configuration that's really not safe to be using with children having hand saws. Um, so they're having to split up the classes right now to, to get them in that space. Uh, these, this is some of the other later additions. Um, you can see this is, well, let's see. Ah. This is the next edition, and then there is a, a patio out here, and this is the CMU portion to the south. So, so this is one of the later additions with the plywood siding and aluminum sliders, 
And here you can see that, that CMU addition to the south, which will be removed as part of this project. This is the back patio addition with a corrugated roof. Um, and the existing building has just been such a hodgepodge of additions. The accessibility is really poor. You can see here how the, these steps lead down with a, you know, the door between the two classrooms and there's no landing. Um, and they're not up to today's standards in many other ways. Like there's no insulation. The electrical service is, is not up to today's standards. Um, and the whole thing really re needs redone. And uh, the, yeah, it insulates poorly. There's just a lot of issues here. So as you can tell, the, the significance of this building is really about the connection to the founder and the connection to the other original buildings, not necessarily about the architecture. So OVS has decided to keep this original portion that faces the quad. Um, it's the portion that's been compromised the least and that they think could be re rehabilitated. Um, there is going to be significant expense and time spent re rehabilitating that because all the original redwood siding will need to be replaced. And um, some of those original awning windows have been painted shut. One of them has been replaced by a window air conditioning unit. And um, so those, those items will need to be addressed. But that portion of the building, even with those issues, is the best candidate for rehabilitation. Plus, it's the original. So we're keeping that. Um, the rest of the building's slated for demolition to make way for um, this new state-of-the-art building, adding, um, adding an art classroom and a multi-purpose slash ceramics classroom. This is a little vestibule connecting the two buildings, which steps back a little bit to provide some separation visually on the outside. Um, a, a new accessible restroom, which the building didn't have any restroom before, um, and a kiln room. And over here, we have planned a, a maintenance equipment yard um, that will actually serve several of the buildings on campus, which allows us to move uh, mechanical equipment to this location, which currently is just sitting outside those buildings, you know, with air conditioners humming outside the, the windows all day. And uh, it'll be nice to put it over in one corner of campus and get it out of the way. Um, the new building will be uh, sustainable design following the CHIP standards, which is the Collaborative for High Performing Schools. Um, we can give you more details on that if you want it. And the project at completion will be 3,139 square feet, which is an increase from the 2,367 square feet that's currently in that location. So um, some of the renovations we're planning. Um, Here's the, here's the original building on the quad, and then this is the new addition. As you can see, it's, it's different in design um, from the original to differentiate itself. One of the Secretary of the Interior's standards is that the addition should appear to be an addition and not part of the historic building. So the historic building is this redwood board and batten. The addition is stucco, and it has a steeper pitched roof and some of the details mimic more the Wallace Neff buildings on campus um, rather than the original workshop building. We're aiming with the addition to provide something that's more welcoming to campus because the current facade facing the parking lot is not super welcoming. Um, we've designed this, this portion with a big arched window and then the covered patio element. Um, which face the parking lot, which is what you'll see when you come onto campus. And then we did, you know, try to break this area of the building up a little bit with the, the clear story, the trellis element, the patio, um, and not have it overwhelm the Neff buildings. Uh, also, this will be a good place for the kids who wait for the bus. They, they would love to have a covered area to do that. Also, the entry doors here to the art room, those are designed, it's hard to see on that slide because it's so small, but um, the glazing in those doors is designed to mimic the existing awning windows to tie the new building in a little bit to the old one. And our aim is that these additions will help this building to continue with its historic use. Uh, when Edward Yeomans put this building on campus, he really wanted it to be the heart of campus. He taught woodshop and poetry in that building himself. 
and um, he was he thought that making things with your hands was a very important part of education. Um, the existing building is just outdated and um, in order to keep it as a place that could be a gathering space for for parents when they you know come to parent teacher conferences and and events at the school um, we wanted to create a space that was welcoming and could be used as a gathering space to kind of continue with that vision um, Another aspect of the project that we wanted to highlight is um, I talked a little bit earlier about some of the site elements that are going to be used to tie together uh, the, the buildings on campus. There are already some, some common elements. If we go back here to the quad, you can see all the buildings have these green roofs, the white plaster, um, and we, our aim is to provide a framework for future renovations at the school. So um, some of the things that we wanted to do as far as details are these windows. You can see our example right there. Um, we are thinking of using clad windows with a divided light look so that they will blend in with the, the existing windows on campus but are something that can be used going forward that would provide um, an energy efficient solution and, and still blend with the campus. They would be um, the, the OVS traditional green. So this is, this is our green color. Um, and then for the, uh, the pathways, we're going to use a, a buff color cement or concrete. And here's our, some, our concrete color. So keeping it all very earthy tones. Um, and the, these, these are some examples of, of the type of thing we would like to do for, for pavers at the entrance and then donor bricks on the patio. Um, they'll be having bricks that, that uh, commemorate the people who've donated to this project, and there are many. Um, some of the other aspects that they would like to propagate throughout campus are those Nephian columns, um, which you can see on the, uh, the patio here. Those are present in, in a couple other buildings on campus, notably the pre-K building next door has a porch with similar columns. So they would like to use that as a, a uniting aspect there. Um, getting a little more into the details, <coughs> the, the eaves at the building um, are an interesting design challenge. This is what we would like to do at the existing Founders Workshop. Um, they'd like to add some rigid insulation to the top of the roof. So the total roof assembly will become deeper, but we'll be keeping the, the size and height of the fascia board the same. It has to be replaced, but we'll be keeping the, the look the same on the fascia. And that's because the existing building has no insulation whatsoever. And um, we think that by, by just raising the, the roof a couple inches and then keeping the fascia the same, it'll keep the same look. At the proposed addition, um, this is the detail. So it's very similar um, with a, a short fascia board. And then um, there'll be a radiused eave tail, which is present at some of the other buildings on campus. Um, but going forward, they're gonna be doing it on, on new buildings going forward. And for the windows, this detail is also similar to some of the other buildings where the stucco wraps into the window <coughs> and then there's a, a divided light window so there'll be a, a three light window and similar on the doors. Here's, this, is, this is kind of a close up of that Nephian column detail which we borrowed from another building. These are some of the light fixtures. Um, they're, they're all industrial style. Some bigger ones, some smaller ones. Um, you know, obviously smaller ones at the porch where you want a human scale. Some bigger ones on the end of the building facing the parking lot. So those are some of the details. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to the committee. We're really excited about this project and we do look forward to hearing your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the commission? We have two um, speaker cards, um, as 
Scott Eicher. Good evening, Commissioner Nicklin and commissioners and staff. I'm Scott Eicher. I reside inside the city limits on Park Road, and I'm here tonight to speak in favor of the Founders Workshop renovation project, and I'm speaking as a, an esteemed quasi, esteemed alumni of the school. <laughs> well, come on. <laughs> you know me. Um, from 1923 to 1926, the original Ojai Valley School campus was built with five Wallace Neff design buildings and one designed by Ojai Valley School founder Edwin Yeomans surrounding a quadrangle. This was the beginning of its history. For over four score years, the Founders Workshop building was used to instruct students in the proper and safe use of woodworking tools, as well as for making repairs to chairs, podiums, and other classroom facilities. Now, some 85 to 90 years later, OVS needs to renovate that Founders Workshop. The Ohio Valley School has a history of respecting the past. This is evident in the old-fashioned scroll-type all-school student body photographs displayed in its offices. Indeed, OVS counts on memories of its own history to help bring the children and grandchildren of its alumni to the school to make their own histories. The fact that this workshop was designed by Edward Yeomans cannot go unnoticed by the OVS Board of Directors or its staff. However, even a yeoman's design building will eventually need to be renovated. With an eye toward this historic architectural value, the new Founders Workshop will pay homage to Edward Yeomans by retaining all of his design elements in the workshop wing that will continue to face the quad. By necessity, other parts will be altered in accordance with, with current health and safety codes and in light of more appropriate design for the new multi-use purpose building. Most of the new building will be just that, brand new. The new portion of the art room will pay homage to Wallace Neff by the selection of similar architectural features as those seen surrounding the quad. It will change the lower campus forever, but then the history, the story of history is the story of change. Ojai has been and continues to be known for its independent schools. All of them have been here for over half a century and some much longer. The Ojai Valley School is improving its ability to provide relevant education to its family of students. The Founders Workshop Renovation Project will not detract from our community. It will not sully the name of Edward Yeomans, nor Wallace Neff, nor denigrate their designs. I urge you to approve this design review permit and allow OVS to move forward with this project. Thank you very much. Thank you. We have a, another a speaker card, Judy Treem. I'm just only going to speak if anyone has questions regarding the history. Yeah. Do we have any? Questions for Judy on the historic side. Do we have any questions for Judy Treem? Uh, thank you. Um, discussion time. Yeah, is there anyone else from the public you wish to address, please? I make a motion to close the public hearing. Move to close the public hearing. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I'll get the ball rolling here. Um, first off, I'd just like to say uh, this is a very special, uh, special project, uh, not only a project, but a special um, uh, uh, item in terms of its, it, the history uh, of this, of the school um, and its place in our community. So uh, it was very special for me and, and I think my, other, my cohorts here to, to be able to get the uh, tour yesterday and, and actually start seeing more of the context of the buildings and the campus and how it relates to each other and really sense the history that's there and uh, the cohesiveness even. Um, uh, and, it, and having at its root uh, this Wallace Neff uh, architecture here and its simplicity and beauty, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. So it's, by, in, its, in that context, it makes this project very sensitive. And um, 
And I, I, I say as a whole, I really like what I'm seeing. I think it's well thought out. Uh, time has been spent on it, and I think it's, uh, just have a, a couple of questions, um, probably regarding uh, mark, uh, architectural stuff. Uh, one question being, uh, is that the main roof pitch of the, uh, is it the art room that faces us with the gable? Or is that taking, us, utilizing the roof pitches that are, the steep pitches that are already existing in the NEF buildings? You're going to have to come forward, please. Thanks. The, the existing buildings actually have differing pitches, and right. it does take those into account. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, we can't say that it mimics one or the other. Okay. It's, it's its own animal, and the pitch was really chosen just based on how it looked from the street. Okay, so you're not, it's not necessarily uh, mirroring the other roof pitches, the steep pitches that, that are there? No. The, well, the existing Just ones are varied pitches. They're not all the mm -hmm. same. But they're right, but in the, the... Yeah, they are steep. The <laughs> nef it is a little bit homage towards that. Okay. All right. That, that satisfies my question. Um, I think uh, I, I, like the, I like the facade as you're driving up and the whole idea of uh, uh, rearranging the approach to that, uh, that parking area and access to the administration along with the pedestrian access. I think there's a, a lot of good ideas. Um, uh, one thing that pops out at me, though, is, uh, and, and, I, and I do appreciate the clear story pop-up above the, uh, I, I guess that's your woodworking area or workshop? Ceramic room, okay. Because um, I, I just like the concept of flat dormers, and I actually, as I was walking around the campus, I saw the Wallace Neff uh, entries uh, repeated several times where they took the roof up higher above the existing slope, and I, and I see that in this, and I, and I think that's a, that's a good call. I would have to say, though, that I think the windows appear to be a little compressed, a little tiny for uh, for the for the amount of stucco that's around them. I'd like to personally would like to see more glass there, and more reflective of what I'm seeing in the rest of the campus. And I think it would work well in that regard. Um, architecturally, I understand uh, the thickening of the rafters uh, to accommodate the existing uh, uh, founders room um, uh, roof pitches. Um, and if I understand the detail correctly, you, you're gonna, it, it's all about leaving the existing rafters in place and then adding insulation to the top and that thereby creating thickness, which, which uh, forces us to, or for, uh, requires you, you to add thicker fascia. And is, so is that overall uh, thickness going to be mirrored throughout that entire complex as it's, uh, or the configuration of the addition and the new, uh, and the existing rather? Actually, sure. the, um, the, the way the detail is adding the thickness to the top of the rafters won't make the fascia deeper. We're planning to just move the fascia up. So the eave tails will be exposed underneath the fascia, which actually happens on several of the other buildings on campus. So the we're eave planning to leave the skinny fascia. Okay, so the, the existing rafters are going to be cut back to the, uh, are they going to remain overhanging and you're going to build on top of them? Correct. They will remain and then we're going to build on top. And with the existing raptors, there, there will be no fascia on the face of that. There will be exposed tails that we'll right, see with some eased edges, that sort of thing. Exactly. It will be exposed tails, and then the fascia will sit on top of them. Okay. So it will maintain the same, the same skinny line of the fascia. Now, are we going to get that look in the new building at all, in the, in the addition portion? Is that the intent yeah. at this yes, point? Yes, that, that is the intent. Yeah. You will, in the new portion of the building, um, you will see a a taller eave tail, mm -hmm. but with the same skinny fascia. Okay, Great. so there's continuity. Yes. Right. I like the, um, you know, speaking of roofs, I, I like the intermix of uh, the standing seam, which you really probably don't see unless you're standing on, uh, from a higher elevation, the metal roof with the shingles. I think that's, that's a, kind of a nice um, uh, treatment to, uh, to upgrade, or not, not necessarily upgrade, but to, uh, enhance uh, a, a more of a contemporary look, but yet still play, pay homage to the building itself. Uh, and I like uh, th those doors. I guess uh, I, they're made to look like doors where you have the bat and the board and bat going with the smaller windows, which reflect what's on the existing building. Uh, the, now, I understand the two side units are sliding units, correct? Correct, and then the so, middle is fixed. So the 
But I'm looking at three, just to clarify, the center must be a fixed unit then. Yeah, so the center is fixed and then the two side panels slide out to the sides. Okay, and those side panels are, uh, they're recessed back into the interiors according to the uh, floor plan, correct? Right, yes. So, uh, so you're going to have a relief from that center panel. Just, I'm just trying, again, I'm just trying to visualize where you guys are going with this thing. Uh, there will be a yes. difference in plane there, yeah. Correct, the alignment's going to be offset, so... But the materials will remain the same. Yes. Right. Okay. Um, I think that's good for now. Don't go too far. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's the architect. I'm the engineer. So I've got a different set of questions. Um, <clears throat> the, the campus is delightful. And um, the, the kids there were... Um, outstandingly bright and happy so I, I was really really impressed with the school I've got a couple of um, questions one is that the the, the parking lot is showing uh, a couple of feet of excavation and there is an an existing oak tree on the Matilla side on the east side of the property line that it appeared from what I could see on the grading plan that that would be impacted by that excavation. Yes. It's also our, the civil engineers weighed in on it too. Could he, did they? Yeah. Okay, they moved the wall. Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. you we'll go. Yeah. Um, we we understood from your site visit yesterday that was a concern, and um, we spoke with the civil engineer this morning, who said that the the difference in grade between our site and the adjacent site at that point is only about a foot. So she thought that your concern could be addressed with with grading and not having the wall continue so far down the site. Okay. That's we did bring some kind of preliminary plans that she, she marked up here, if you want to see them. Sure. I, you went out and looked at the tree, right? Hi, hi, Paul. I went and looked at the tree before I came over. And um, yes, there would most likely be an impact. It would be less than significant, in my opinion. It wouldn't, in other words, it would not kill the tree. So in, uh, in mitigation for that impact, uh, there are special design uh, processes that we could utilize. Uh, we could bridge over the roots. Most, all these processes would simply require uh, arborist involvement during the construction process. So when, that, uh, when they go in there to excavate along the, uh, that area, the arborist should be present to monitor uh, the impact to the roots, then uh, to make sure that they are less than significant at, at that point. And if they mm -hmm. are, then I think that uh, there are some mitigations that could be involved. One might be the use of uh, permeable paving such as gravel just under the drip line of the tree. Uh, possibly eliminating the retaining wall. If necessary, shorten one or two of the parking spaces. I, I agree. And while you're there, um, can you give a little of the background on, on, or on your design, your landscape design? Sure. Just, um, yeah, you're absolutely. a professional, and, I, and, and I'd, I'd just like to understand what, uh, what you're trying to accomplish what, what the theme of it is yeah yeah well there's a couple different elements to it Paul um, one is the tree mitigation which is required by the by the uh, tree protection ordinance so in uh, in mitigation for removing the trees that are protected by the ordinance uh, we will be replanting a number of trees and those are shown on the landscape plan uh, <clears throat> The trees along the eastern perimeter of the property are all oak trees, coast live oak. 
And that really blends with the existing uh, grove of Coast Live Oaks that's part of the uh, Matilla Junior High School campus. Mm -hmm. So there's a nice blending there. Uh, the, the other trees uh, throughout the campus have been selected for beauty and shade and appropriate size at maturity. Um, and there are a variety of them. I, I'm not looking at the plan right now. <clears throat> also, the landscape is designed to have a plentiful flowering color in it. There are some perennials in it. In addition, the school really wants to, uh, this is a private elementary school, and so the school really wants to upgrade the appearance of the landscape and have plenty of uh, color in it. And so the plants have been selected for two things. One is drought tolerance, because the water issue in Ojai is so critical. So all of these plants, and if you looked at the planting plan, you'll see that this, uh, even this preliminary planting plan uh, complies with the new state standard that the city is in the process of uh, attempting to adopt. And the actual, what's called the WUCOLS listing, the water use classification of landscape species, the listing of each one of those plants is on that <coughs> plant list. And you can see that all of those are in the moderate or low uh, category for uh, water use. So, but that does not mean that you can't have flowers. So what we have selected is a palette that is, we call it a Mediterranean plant palette, but also uh, with regard to maintenance. In other words, you can put a lot of splashy color in there, but then that would require a lot of maintenance. So we've selected plants that we know will be fairly easy to maintain and give a lot of color and be drought tolerant. Does this answer your question? Getting there. Okay. <laughs> the, um, the, now I understand that there's a, a, a six foot block wall for screening of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, <clears throat> I'm on the Complete Streets Committee and we work very hard towards getting street trees um, that are that will shade pedestrians and part cars. Mm -hmm. So I, I love everything about your design, except that the trees are, plant, are too far away from the walk to, to provide mm -hmm. shade on those, on those sidewalks. Yeah. So with that adjustment, I'd be really happy with it. Okay. Uh, I think we're, we're open to that. Great. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's all I've got. I uh, just saying about the architect and the engineer with me with uh, plant background. <coughs> um, I think the landscape plan has been very well thought out, and um, I would agree with Commissioner Crabtree. Maybe if we could have some more shade towards the, s the street, I, I, you probably took into account with the opening going out for bus right. um, vision and you know uh, vehicle vision out into the street. That might have been a factor in that decision. Um, but, and your use of color and, and drought tolerant color, I think, was very well thought out. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you. Question for Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Tom, if I may just butt in here. Uh, and you probably played part in the hardscape as well in designing that? Yes, Stephen. Um, so, that area in front of the admin building that looks over the, the grassy quad area there. Uh, I, it looks like you have a complete circulation, then it just stops on the north side and the south side, and, and right. old asphalt remains. Correct. And uh, I'm wondering, it's such a small area, it just makes sense to complete the loop and fill that in, unless there are other special considerations I'm not aware of. There are, and that uh, Tara alluded to it in her presentation, that this is the initial effort in a uh, let's call it a campus-wide upgrade of things like paving, circulation elements. So around the quad, um, we've just done what is absolutely necessary for this project. Most likely in a subsequent project, the, that little gap that you're pointing to would be filled in, but it would be then designed as part of something that would probably entail the whole quad. Thanks. 
I didn't have a question for you, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I don't want to repeat the, some of the issues that uh, are not concerns, but just uh, items were already brought up by the other commissioners and already asked and answered. Um, I, I like this. I think it's a great, uh, going to be a great project for the school. Um, I'm excited for the school and the students and the alumni as well. I think everyone can uh, feel good about it. Uh, I like to... Uh, I've done a number of renovations and restorations. That's kind of what I like to do. And uh, obviously the Founders Workshop has been kind of kept uh, in its original state. And I think that's very, I'm glad you're doing that. Um, and I'm also happy to hear about how you're going to address that original building. I think it's going to look really good. Um, I'm also very happy to hear that you're going to consolidate and improve your maintenance uh, not your maintenance, but your utility systems, your electrical and with the trans single transformers and things like that. Th those make a huge difference for future, for future phases, but also make a huge difference when it comes to safety. And um, I was really glad to hear that. It will also allow you to remove some of the more blighted uh, apparatus around the campus. I know when you do those other phases. Um, I know I, I did read the historical report. I did go through the... Uh, Eastern Easterly Wing, and with an eye towards what could you save in there, and it looks like over the years, and perhaps this building didn't look the same 40 years ago. Even um, it looks like it's really been chopped up, and you know, being one that likes to take old materials that that can be reused um, and made part of the new addition. The only thing I really saw in that building was perhaps the floor could be used somewhere um, in the addition. Um, the rest of it just seemed like it had been kind of hod hodgepodge in there and kind of thrown together over the, the many years that it was there. So overall, I, I really do like the architecture. I like the, uh, the fact that you're changing that, that uh, parking lot entrance. That's always been kind of odd uh, to me, and, and I'm sure to a lot of people that have been there. It just seems like a lot of asphalt comes in right in your face when you, when you drive in there. Although I do appreciate it that when I'm in my big truck, I can turn around. Um, <laughs> I'd prefer just to park somewhere else and walk in there, though. Uh, so I'm very uh, happy for you. I like the project. I think it was uh, very well architected. Um, and I think, um, you know, I hope that you, you have, have very good, good success with it. I think it's going to be a, a very nice addition to the school in keeping with the history. All right. I'll move to determine the project to be categorically exempt pursuant to the California Environmental Quality Act and adopt PC resolution number 13-17 approving design review permit DRP 13-13 and tree permit T13-18 subject to the findings and conditions of approval revised as follows. 8A, the landscaping plan will be revised to plant oak or sycamore trees adjacent to the sidewalk to provide shade for pedestrians and parked cars. And number 17 would be an addition of uh, parking lot grading shall be revised to protect the existing oak tree on the adjacent property to the east. I'll second the motion. Uh, any, any discussion, please? Um, I would like to include enlarging those windows, those clear story windows. I think there's an issue there that I'd certainly like to take, ideally, uh, it'd be great to see it before we approve the project, but I think that could probably be done between staff and the architect. Uh, maybe, uh, and you could give me a call and we could come in and take a look at that, that particular feature. Certainly. Take a look at that. Um, and before, uh, uh, that would be the only thing I've had, had to say architecturally. I, I didn't have really time to read the, uh, the final tree report from uh, uh, Mr. Anaba. And I just would like clarification on that, um, uh, that oak tree, that, uh, the, the cabled oak tree and its condition. Could, could we just address that before we move on with a, a motion? 
I mean, um, is that possible? Do we have to open up the I think public? we have to open up the public hearing, I believe. Can we? Uh, Tom, would you like to come up, please? You're right, Tom. So uh, it's just not clear to me that that the necessity to remove that. I know there's concerns, potential concerns. Uh, in your, I, I did read what you, you read about that, mm -hmm. uh, or wrote about that, and saying that uh, there was no confirmation on any uh, degradation on the interior of the tree at this point. Mm -hmm. The signs were pointing towards that eventuality. Mm -hmm. uh, just want to get clarification on that because it's a beautiful tree. It's kind of by itself out there. I don't see it presenting uh, so much a hazard, uh, at least in, in, the, in its uh, proposed location in conjunction with your new design. Mm -hmm. So could you expound on that for us? Uh, sure. The, I believe in my report I said that the tree is in decline. And so it's just a matter of time. Uh, it's not a short-term decline. It's not imminent. Uh, nor is it probable that it will fail uh, anytime soon, but it is in decline. So uh, in a case like this, we're looking at the long-term picture of the use of that space for the school. And so taking the long-term view, we're taking that tree out, using that space for parking, which is essential right there to create the Ent the whole entrance to the school, the arrival sequence, so that uh, parents coming for admissions to visit the school, there's a whole entry, arrival, uh, patio right there. That's part of this whole design. So we, we eliminate that tree, but in accordance with the ordinance, we mitigate for it. Um, and so we plant a number of specimen trees, and these are large specimen trees. So when they are planted, they will already be, some of them, uh, 12, 18 feet tall. So that whole front will be reforested with coast live oak trees. So it's really a, the best and highest and best use of that space right there. Does uh, the existing location of that tree actually obstruct the dry, is, it in, is the driveway going yes. through that? Is that what's yes, that's the issue? It, or one of the we issues? looked at a number, a number of different ways of trying to design that and still maintain, uh, because the city is asking us to maintain the same number of parking spaces on the overall campus. If that were not a requirement, we might be able to eliminate some spaces there. But since it is, we really need to use that space for the parking. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Um, Paul has asked me to uh, maybe word uh, my amendment to the, to the motion. And I suppose we could put it under uh, condition, label it as condition number 12 to the design review. Oh, 12 is here, so. 11A. Uh, yeah, call it 11A. And that would be a reconfiguration of the clear story windows at the ceramic building, uh, to essentially making them larger and work you know, cohesively with the rest of the building. Staff would also like clarification on Commissioner Crabtree's addition of the shade trees, whether it was along the proposed pedestrian path on the school campus or the sidewalks along the street? Sidewalk. <clears throat> the, the, mo the motion does say sidewalk. We just wanted to verify. Okay. Are you okay with the amendment to your motion? Commissioner Crabtree? Yes, I would amend my motion to include Commissioner, Commissioner Foster's um, request to change to the Clara Story windows. Commissioner Becker, you're okay with the second for that? I'm okay with that, that change. Any more discussion? So to be, just, just to be clear, so the applicant knows, uh, on those design changes, uh, we would have uh, perhaps a quick consultation with uh, Commissioner Foster, particularly on the windows, um, once you came with the solution. 
ready for roll call? Crabtree? Yes. Foster? Yes. Becker? Yes. Nicklin? Yes. Osborne? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> We move on to um, item number three, director report and director actions. In your packet, you found that um, we've been somewhat active with a variety of items, pretty straightforward, a couple new signs, and then um, I'm afraid to say a lot of removal of hazardous trees. And as you know, we've been fighting through that with the drought and everything else. If you have any specific questions on any of those items, I'd be happy to try to address them. I've got, I've got a recurring uh, situation with the mob shop. They were conditioned to plant street trees on Ohio Avenue, and they still haven't done so. We'll be glad to check into it. If I, I was here when that came through, and I do remember there was, and I'm not saying that this item was one of them, but there was some items that were um, granted a five-year extension. I know that the um, redo, Sherry. For the sidewalk. And that was we the are aware of it, and we have talked to them, and we're trying to work with them, but they're just not cooperating. We will, but we do um, frequently discuss it with them. We will go why ahead aren't they and on, Why aren't they on the? Yeah, that's not on this. This is the director, so it would be the next item that I think. Oh, okay, I okay. But I'm jumping the gun. I think, I think that what we would like to do is, based on your comment, we will pursue it based on the next item we'll be discussing. Okay. It has been brought up before. Hmm? It has been brought up before many, many times. <laughs> many times, yeah. So no questions on that one. I'll go forward to the next item, which is our um, code enforcement we're actively pursuing. We met with the city attorney recently so that I was um, wanting to pursue and understand what we could do as a whole to try to get through some of these older items. Um, as I indicated to you just now, I'll be happy to add the mob shop as one of our items on this list, and we will pursue things. Um, we are actively um, spending quite a lot of time on code enforcement right now. You will be seeing some changes as we go forward based on the meeting that we had with the city attorney and things that way and our steps and what we're doing, but we'll explain that as we go forward. If you have any specific questions, I'll try to answer those. I just have one question again. I see it's been closed. Um, item number C13-97. Okay, just Ed one second. It was the dead pine tree. Okay. I've, I have some people ask me what's happening with that. I see it's been referred to the f fire department. Um. Yes, that's what it, it's indicated that it's on private property, and so that complaint has been forwarded to the fire department. Okay. So the city is not working on that one currently. We have re asked the fire department. It's okay. within their realm. Yeah, thank you. We'll move on to um, item number five, future agenda items. Currently, your next meeting is November 6th. We do not have any formal items showing up on that agenda. We have not canceled that meeting, though, because we are still working with applicants on things. So I would um, ask you to bear with us. We'll, um, for a public notice, we'd have to notice by next week, uh, or the 25th, which may be next week. Um, 
And so we'll keep you posted as to whether we will be having a meeting that night or not. But I'd like to keep it open so that we could add something if necessary. Excuse me, one note too is there's five Wednesdays in this month, so that's why it will you will have an extra week in between. I'd like to maybe add a the reason we if you recall, Sherry, you might recall this, we came up with the future agenda items for a couple of reasons. One is to suggest future agenda items. So um, one thing I like to suggest is, and we've talked about this before, you know, I, I love these large packets. They're great um, um, for laying out on my large kitchen table and looking at them, and I did. Uh, I would, you know, we're coming to the end of the year, and what happens at the end of the year is we rapidly approach the new budget season, and so much goes on in that January, February, March that we don't have a lot of time to give input into the budgeting area. We've talked about it before, and I think we've come along far enough. I see Paul's got his iPad. I have an iPad. I know you do. That I think maybe considering, and it would save the applicants a lot of money, sending these types of files and requesting that submissions be consistent with the 11 by 17 as their packet, Certainly. if needed. Mm -hmm. um, and perhaps consider as part of the new budget cycle that even with the... Um, Council and Parks and Rec that we have a few um, iPads up here or something similar and just get rid of all this paperwork. We really don't need it. And I look at plans this size all the time on my iPad. I can just zoom in and look at the detail. Quite frankly, it's even clearer than this. One of the, prob the problems you have with the, even the 11 by 17s and these is you just can't get the detail. But when you get that at file, it's clear. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can put in a suggestion for that and see if we can't get something going for next year. It's excellent. Appreciate that. Thank you. Um, Planning Commission subcommittee reports. We, uh, nothing, nothing to report. Um, and then finally, our um, city council liaison, yes. Carol Smith. Hello, everyone. Sorry, I missed the first meeting. Good evening. In my, uh, Three months. I really enjoy being here, and I. This is a terrific project. It was. I was looking at, it and I was saying, "Wow, this is really going to upgrade the campus and be very nice." And I thought, your comments were, of course, showed your professional thoughtfulness on it, and they were very well received. So, I think this is going to be a win-win for the school and the community, and it's cool. Uh, <laughs> I agree with your questions totally about that oak. It seems to be a far afield, and why does it have to come down now? Maybe the money for the next part of the project is not that far away. You know, I don't know exactly what uh, the CEO was thinking, but I also don't really like the idea that tree has to come down right now. I didn't quite see that, but Tom seemed to uh, support it with a reasonable way. Uh, welcome, Anne. Welcome back to our family. <laughs> I had a question. Rancho Motel seems to be turning into a catering place and wedding venue and all. Have they put in an application? Well, what's going on with that? That is one of our code enforcement issues, and it is an ongoing issue, and we are working through that. And they have not filed an application. They have not filed. No, they have not. Supposedly, the new owner has done a wonderful <coughs> job on landscaping and doing the rooms and that the, the very back area of that Rancho Motel, which actually opens onto the, the trail. It is a beautiful space. They have a nice view there. I mean, it can certainly serve as a area for weddings or whatever, but they have not gone through the proper process. They have not gone through the proper process. There have been numerous uh, code enforcement complaints mm -hmm. and the police have been called for services out there because of noise issues. After the neighbors uh -huh. were at the council meeting right. recently, mm -hmm. and we are actively pursuing. That's going to be a line that you're going to hear us say based on the attorney and everything. The details won't be given out to the public. It's going, and, and this is a public forum, so we will be letting you know that we are actively pursuing the um, property owner in this case is definitely aware that they need a conditional use permit the neighbors know they need a conditional use permit the neighbors are well aware of what they need to do 
in calling the police if it's after 10 o'clock, and so we are all actively pursuing. Okay, I, I just don't know what, what he was thinking to go ahead with this huge project and the landscaping without putting these steps. You know, it always amazes me. What, what was that case, the, the uh, $20,000 rock wall on North Signal, and he never got a permit for it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how people think sometimes. It's just, it, it's totally irrational to spend that much on a project that basically could have been torn down because, the, you know, it was, believe me, it came to you guys and you said, no, it has to go because this, this, and that. And it came to us and I think it fell into the feel sorry category and they promised they will never do a thing without coming to the city again. But I don't know how people think about these things. It's really a, a shame. Irrational exuberance. <laughs> what is it who said that? Greenbaum or somebody? Uh, we had a special meeting on the housing element with real estate agents on Monday night, and I was back for that. Interesting, they're, they are, and I understand their point. You know, the housing element uh, cycle that ends in 14, of course, which we su submitted very late, but it had the amnesty program, which we were very fortunate that Sacramento allowed us to consider. But in fact, the amnesty towards owners who can uh, to come in to report a second dwelling unit that they, is non-permitted would be up January 2014, okay? Which is coming right up. But apparently in the paperwork, there was a difference between the housing element and now the, the, uh, the uh, ordinance is on the books already. So that was one question. And we dealt with that. We extended it, you know, that's not going to be in, in, in a case. People who've already, who, the real estate agents do not have to put in the extra paperwork. They balk at doing the extra paperwork because they already have so many papers that they need to have signed about uh, disclosure. They have a ton of stuff they do. And I agree with, you, with them. I don't know what, I mean, I've changed houses four times in this valley, and I had very professional realtors, and I knew exactly what I was getting. I had gone to the city. You know, I mean, if anybody buys a house, let's say, and they have not found out that the recreation room, the whatever, is not permitted, it, it's hard to imagine. They must have had a very strange realtor, or they didn't go to the city or whatever. So I don't think it's the actual... Um, th well, they were ob objecting to the extra paperwork and, and all that, but the real issue to me and was brought up is that the realtors really are in very much in favor of the amnesty program. And we have not been able to even get an ombudsman to come on board, because the ombudsman is supposed to, let's say some guy in the Arbolata bought his house 20 years ago and there already, already was existing a non-permitted second dwelling unit. So he inherited it, he's continued to rent it out, whatever he's done with it, I don't know. And uh, if he comes in with the amnesty program, we're going to ignore setbacks, either side yard or front yard or all that stuff, but he has to adhere to the health and safety units. But of course it's also going to go to county and his real estate values will go up. As far as I know, when uh, the assessor for the bank comes for the loan, they don't even count units that are not permitted. That's not even, they say this doesn't exist. It's not part of the, what we'll be willing to, uh, to loan on. Is that correct, Troy? It just doesn't exist for them. Usually, yeah. Yeah. But so in a sense, it's much more favorable for the owner to have this as, as, as permitted. The thing seemed to be, and there was, they it all expressed, believe me, every seat was taken and then some. So 100% of them said they're for the amnesty program. They're going to work with us to try to get the ombudsman in place. They want to work with Ojai Valley Sanitary District uh, as far as can they do anything about the fees for illegal hookups. Well, good luck on that. I mean, what do you tell someone who's had a, who has a legal permitted second dwelling unit who's paid the 15000 has been collecting rent on this or whatever it is, and somebody who has had it for 15, 20 years and has been collecting a thousand bucks a month for a rental they have on their property, and says I can't afford the fifteen thousand dollar fee. Come on, you know I have a hard time with that. I don't know how that'll work out, 
But because Ojai Valley Sanitary went in there with their cameras, whatever, they know people who have illegal hookups. Which, of course, we could share the information with us, so a lot of these non-permitted second dwelling units will certainly come to our attention. But that seemed to be the, uh, what a few people on the council thought is the real stepping block, is how can Ojai Valley Sanitary lower their fees for these, quote, amnesty people? And I don't know how they're going to do it, because I would be extremely ticked off if my neighbor had to pay less and I had done everything by the book. And they've been collecting rent on this place for six years at $1,000 a month. So what does that bring in? 12000 a year times four or five years, and they're, and they're barking about the $15,000 fee? I don't know how that's going to work out, but that was a big stumbling block. But the realtors are really, ang they're, they're for the amnesty program, they want to make it work, they want the, um, the owners to come forward, their assessed value of their property will go up, their taxes will go up too, but people didn't seem to think the increase in taxes by the county would be anything compared to the evil Ojai Valley Sanitary District. So I don't know about that. To me, again, you're talking about People have reaped the values of this, and the, the, the district hasn't gotten a penny. <laughs> so if anybody can come up with a solution to that, it would be great. But I think, in, in general, it was a very productive meeting. And the realtors, I'm happy to say, seem to be much more on the city side, that we want to get these units uh, uh, passed. We want to make them, un make them legal. We want them to count towards our housing element. So I think it really worked to have much more of a team Ojai approach rather than the realtors always feel the city are imposing things on them. So that was real good. And uh, that's about all I had to say. Well, thank you for your work. Thank you. And with that, I'll adjourn the meeting. <laughs>